Okay, I offered to do a video on Amanda Knox, and here it is. I'm going to talk about Amanda Knox and all the realities and the truth that we know in the Amanda Knox case when we look at it really detailed and very closely and we look for the truth and not for the off-the-wall stuff that was created. I apologize for the close-up. This is the best that I could do while keeping my hands on the, on the wheel. I will keep my eyes on the road. There's This is the same way as just talking with someone in the car. Uh, someone was just sitting next to me and I had a conversation while I'm driving. Um, like I said, my hands are on the wheel. No, no more discussion about that because, you know, beginning. The beginning of Amanda Knox case. We have to go back a few years before what happened uh, at the time of Mer Meredith Kirscher's death. And go back to this judge called Giuliani or Giuliano. And I apologize because I didn't, I'm going through everything that is in my mind. I, I did not look up his people's last names but I could put them in the description anyway Douglas Preston an American journalist was writing a book he was in Italy and he was writing a book about what he was titled the book the monster of Florence there was a place in Florence uh, they call it lovers lane where this was way back in the years apparently couples would go to this place that was kind of secluded and they would make out and have sex or just make out and they call it lover's lane and uh, what happened was a, a series of killings started to happen and the couples were dismembered they would find very bizarre things like the near here or parts of the body there. And Preston was going to write a book about this. He went to Italy. This this is going to have a tremendous amount of bearings. You have to really take this into account when it comes to the Amanda Knox case. It has nothing to do with the same perpetrators. Not That's not what it is. It has to do with Giuliani or Giuliano, the judge. What happened to Preston, he paired up with another Italian journalist and they were starting to do journalistic investigating and they were doing a better job at investigating apparently than the police. So Preston, as he was doing the investigating, they were really getting really close to something. He was called in by the police and he encountered Giuliano which is the same prosecutor that formulated the case against Amanda Knox. And the situation has nothing to do with him targeting any necessarily Americans. It just happened that Preston had this very unpleasant experience where this Giuliano threatened him and he said, you either get out of this country or you're going to go to jail simple as that. Preston got out of the country as fast as he could. His sidekick, the Italian journalist, didn't have it as good. I think he, he was, he actually got not only detained, but there's all kinds of things that happen with that case, but you have to keep in mind there is corruption in Italy. Certain places in Italy are corrupt and there is corruption, there's police corruption. I've lived in other countries too and I know what that is like, where it's different than the United States, where the corruption is a lot less, it's very less likely. The system here works, there is somewhat, even though it's not perfect, it works better here. But I understand police corruption in other countries and that happens in Italy. So this Giuliano eventually somehow, I'm not so sure if it was 
related to Preston, Douglas Preston um, making public his experience, his nasty experience, but he was suspended. And this, so this, this guy was suspended. And then come Amanda Knox, this 20 year old girl from Seattle, she was an A student, had never been in trouble, had never shown any signs of any kind of trouble, as innocent as can get. Uh, she worked three jobs. She had this dream of going to Italy, and she was going to go. It was I, I don't know so sure if it was an exchange, but um, the town in Italy where she was going is supposed to be like the twin sister town of Seattle, and so, or was it Portland? I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm getting my facts a little bit here, but she was. She had a dream of going to Italy, so she was working really hard, was working three jobs, get her earnest money to go to Italy. 20 years young, inexperienced young woman. And so she goes to Italy and rents a room with other girls. And then she has no clue what's about to happen to her. When she was up against this man, this Giuliano she didn't have a chance so let's go through the facts here let's go through what really happened there's been a ton of experts that have given expert opinion one thing that happens and I have to put this out there is people get imprinted let's say I talk to you bad about someone and I give you all this thing and I say this person is a slut or this person is um, and I paint a picture and somehow you get that person pinned in your mind that this person is guilty. Once you have that imprinted, it's not easy to remove unless you're a person that can do that. And with the Kircher family, they, they lost a beautiful daughter, they lost a beautiful sister. and. My understanding is very difficult for them. You know, why was Mer Meredith the one that died? Amanda did not die, and Amanda was not killed. And these are just human things. It's not that people are evil, it's called feelings, it's called emotions, and it's called very strong emotions. So anyway, um, there's the imprinting. Bear in mind what I'm gonna give you, it's, it's really information. The, there is an expert here in the United States that he's an expert on time reconstruction and he reconstructed based on the data that, that, they, that we have, he reconstructed the crime and it's very simple. It's a burglary gone wrong. It was a burglary gone wrong, very bad, but um, what these experts have talked about, for instance, if it's a force, is, you know, usually they said the simplest Usually the simplest explanation is the one that is true. If you get a very convoluted one and a very convoluted theory and you throw in now uh, satanic rites and you, there was all these inventions that were thrown there that weren't there at all, didn't exist. It was a very, very simple, bad murder crime. And they, knew, they had the guy they had the guy that did it so anyway let's go back in time so Amanda a very inexperienced young girl she was kidding you can see how rosy she gets she was a little drunk there's this little clip and she's just getting tipsy with a little bit of wine <clears throat> and she they're talking their friends are kidding her and they're gifting her to sexual toys and say that she's gonna find these Italian men and she's gonna gain experience. She did have, um, she, in the train in Italy, she had an encounter, a sexual encounter. I wanna tell you, I know personally people that used to have, go to bars and pick up men and have one night stands. That doesn't make them murderers. It's actually, looks like it was pretty standard. Some people would do these things. They, it happens in American life and in, in 
or being live in other places. So it happened to Amanda. She was on a train and met this guy and they got on with it. That does not make her a murderer. Her murderer. And when she was in Italy then, so she rented all these young women when rented this cottage and everyone had their room and she met Meredith and they were casual friends and so on. Meredith and, and Amanda both spoke English and the other girls were Italian. So, fast forward, they also knew some of the guys that rented downstairs, they've gotten together, they've gone downstairs and they were there and apparently this other guy, Wadey, was an African guy. He was brought from Africa at a very young age. He um, was part of the group. Somehow he, he knew the guys downstairs and got to meet the girls. Not so sure if he said something about liking one of the American or English girls, but that's how they 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 brushed. You know, they had this encounter meeting, kind of got to know this guy who had a criminalist history. And going back a little bit onto the monster of. Sicily or Florence, the monster of Florence, I think it was. What was happening there, it looked almost as if one of those crimes where the police didn't want to find the person that was committing those crimes. That's what it looked like. It looked like a lot of corruption in that sense. But I also wanted to point something more. So yeah, so Amanda, you know, was like a young girl going to Europe and visiting and wanting to learn the language. And on an occasion she met Rafael Solicito and they fell in love. Uh, they, they, they just had this huge attraction and they started being together like every minute together. So let's just go ahead and go back straight to the time. There was a Halloween night and it was also the end of the month and the way people in Italy pay rent is that they pay cash. That happens in not many places in the world, you know. I lived in Latin America and you just pay cash. There's, they don't. And so it looked like um, Meredith had collected everybody's rent in cash and she had it in her purse to pay it the very next day. Waiting. I'll, 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 I have to lay out this background on Wadey, this African man. He had a history of bur burglaries. He had burglarized uh, many places, one of which, and this is going to be very significant, one of the places he burglarized was the most odd place. It was a lawyer's office, and all that was missing from that lawyer's office, attorney's office, was some files there was legal files why would a burglar want legal files unless someone else wanted those legal files and contracted a known burglar to get them and the typical thing with waited what has been known because he had been found several times at one time he would get he was actually very brazen, and sometimes sociopaths will do that. He would make himself at home. He would make himself a meal, use the bathroom, just like didn't care if somebody would walk in on him. He would just be right at home. And he had an encounter with somebody who did walk in on him in his house, and he will he wielded a sharp knife so he was willing to do what he needed to, to do very dangerous individual the attorney's office that he burglarized prior to Amanda's place 
had a tall window that he climbed onto, the very same modus operandus as um, as it happened with Meredith Kircher. I'm gonna fix this for a second here. Okay, so it was the same way. He would throw a rock, break the window, climb the wall, tie wall, and just get in. And then he would he would trash the place. So, on that Halloween night, Wadey had been put on notice. He was way behind on, on his rent. He has he had not paid, he didn't, it looks like he might have not had the money to pay the rent and he was going to be evicted. So he had to find rent money. And the theory that I totally believe is that this is what happened the girls were all out for Halloween now I'm losing everything they were all out for Halloween they were partying they were doing whatever they were doing and Meredith was the first one to go back home that night she got home trying to remember all the times and the hours but she got home the the theory is that Wadey had burglarized the house where the girls live and he probably threw he threw a rock broke the window climbed the wall got inside he knew that probably the girls had rent money so he was trashing the place looking for the rent money he went to use the restroom because that's what he normally did. He, he, he'd make himself at home and he would use the restroom there because he, that's how brazen he was. And the poor Meredith Kircher happened to walk in back home at the wrong t alone, at the wrong time, at the wrong, wrong moment and wrong place, wrong time, um, with the wrong person in, in it, in the house. All the old, and there was nobody else in the house because not only all the other girls were out partying, but Raphael, Amanda was with Raphael. Um, they, they spend every minute of their time together, so they didn't even care to be out. They just were in his apartment. There is an alibi, um, at least for Raphael. Well, Raphael was Amanda's alibi, and there was another girl that saw Raphael around those hours when probably the murder was taking place. So Raphael was already confirmed that he was at his house. So anyway, um, way they went to use the restroom, Meredith probably walked in because he had only trashed one of the bedrooms, which is the bedroom where he got in. Meredith did not notice anything off about the house, and she went to her bedroom. Wade probably heard her come in, so he did not flush the toilet to not give himself, you know, uh, blow his cover. And all he did was, she probably had the rent money too. You know, he had found it in the main lady's room. Probably went to see if she had the rent money. So he caught her by surprise and all the forensics indicate that she, Meredith was probably grabbed from behind and then the knife, he cut her throat from behind. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the findings. So Amanda Knox, she had spent the night at Rafael Solicitos, and then the next morning she needed to go get a change of clothes. So she went back home. She noticed little tiny drops of blood in the bathroom. But you know, the girls menstruate. Sometimes you cut yourself. Maybe I've done that. I've cut myself cutting my toenails. She didn't think much of it because it wasn't like a blood bath. It was just little tiny 
tiny specks of blood here and there in a couple places and so she didn't she didn't make much of it but the one thing that freaked her out is that we're stool in the toilet and she knew that Meredith was very 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 capped and she didn't think anybody would have left an unflushed toilet so that freaked her out a little bit and you know you can relate that you you see things and you don't they don't look that alarming so she just went back to Raphael and then that's what you do you talk to somebody say you know this looks very odd and that's what she did she mentioned that to Raphael and Raphael decided to say let's go back to the house and see what's going on because Raphael was a little bit older than Amanda, just a couple of three or maybe two or three years older. And he lived in Italy and he just thought, let's go back and look. So they went back and she tried to knock on Meredith's door and couldn't get her to respond. Somehow they called the police. Or either that or Raphael broke the door down anyway. The thing is that when the police arrived, I think as the police came, they, blow, they knocked the door down and they found Meredith's body in a bloody bath. And it looked like there was all the indications of what I said, as if somebody had cut her throat and there was she probably there's all that indication gasping for air and so there's splatter of blood on the walls so it was a murder scene and immediately the Italian girls they immediately probably knowing the Italian system they immediately lawyered up they each one got a lawyer but not Amanda Amanda wanted to help the police. She was very innocent, very naive. She barely spoke the language, but she wanted to help the police. She was very scared. And so she was spending every minute with Rafael. So um, because it was a murder scene, she couldn't stay at her house. And she ended up going to stay at Rafael's. She didn't have underwear, so she was spotted buying underwear she needed clean underwear and they it was made into the story that she was looking for lingerie because that's how people twist things that should be illogical so anyway um, she was afraid to be alone so when Raphael was called to question she went with him she didn't want to be alone and Oh yeah, I remember now what I wanted to mention. The way that I got pulled into this case was I have a friend of mine and she's an astrologer and she writes books on astrologer, astrology. And she was looking at the Amanda Knox case and what she said was that Amanda looked like that odd person that could be easily misunderstood and mistaken give the wrong impression sometimes and I think that I can see how that can happen so anyway she's doing stretching she's stretching her body while she's waiting to go in I also think that when you are that kind of a naive person that is not thinking that other people are going to think bad about you or what they're going to think and so forth I think that you can be also be spotted as Possible potential Ponzi. Not Ponzi, what's the word? Pansy? Um, anyway. So then they called her into question too, and it was apparently it was a horrendous interrogation. And she had her she was on her period, she was not allowed to go to the bathroom. It was hours and hours, she didn't understand what was going on so there was also a texting that was going on between Amanda and the bar where she was working 
she was bartending or waitressing because she did get a job. This is a working girl. She got a job also in Italy. while she was in Italy. She could get a student job. And so she was, I can't, I guess she was canceled that night, that same night. And the expression in, in English is, okay, see you later. Well, the Italians didn't understand that expression, see you later, and took it literally to mean that she was planning to meet with her boss afterwards. It's, a, it's all a mess. It's really messy. And somehow they started, oh, well, she saw the, the stool in the toilet, because she kept saying, I saw a stool in the toilet, and I... You know, I thought it was strange, so they started looking at her, and somehow they decided to put pin, pin this on Amanda. What happened later is, due to they had messy forensics that they were doing, and then there were some good forensics. When they did more examination on the room, they found all this DNA, and all the DNA belonged to Wadey who had fled, by the way, this has to be mentioned too, that same night he fled, he fled to Germany, I think it was, he had fled to Germany, and he also had a cut in his hand, and it's believed that was probably from the knife that he used to cut to torture with, and perhaps uh, she tried to defend herself somewhat, it's, it's called a defensive wound. He had a really good cut in his hand. By that time, it was already starting to heal. So, Wade fled to Germany, and the murder was going to be pinned on Amanda and her boss. But Rafael Solicito stuck by his story. He stuck by his saying that he, he was the alibi for Amanda Knox. And he stuck to the story that Amanda was with him that night, that he, they spent the night together. And so that didn't go well with the police, so therefore they throw him into the, the theory, and they say that he was also there. So now there were three people in a tiny room conducting an orgy and decided to kill Meredith, all three of them. When the truth was, there was a burglar who broke into their house Meredith walked in on him, did not know that he was inside, and he killed her. But also, it looked like he also um, probably raped her as she was dying. This is how sick this is. Because they found his semen, Wade's semen, I think it was her, her she was half naked, his semen was outside off her the way someone probably pulls out and who knows but um, his semen was there uh, I'm going to tell you all that they found there was overwhelming evidence against Wadey they found his hand mark and fingerprints on, in blood on her purse so he had blood in his hand and he still reached for the rent money in, inside her purse uh, they found a shoe print in blood also that corresponded 100% without a doubt to his own shoes that he wore so there was all this overwhelming evidence on Wadey and this is what I wanted to mention what happened to me is my friend had brought up this whole thing of Amanda Knox and so I started reading about it and when I read that there was no DNA they found zero no none of Amanda's DNA not even a, a little hair nothing in Meredith Kirch's murder place in her room I said to myself this girl is innocent I knew it I just I still feel very strongly there's no way what was she wearing a spacesuit there's no way that you would find nothing of her. Nothing. Absolutely zero. And there was a mountain of evidence against
came sweating, waiting. He left everything. How could Amanda have been there and not left anything? There is a lot of confusion that was thrown on in there because later, days later, a clasp of Meredith's bra was found and they found uh, Raphael's DNA there. Some, some people wonder if this was planted, but there was also a lot of indication of cross-contamination as well. Because when you see the videos of everything that was done, everything that was done was done wrong. They're supposed to actually wear all this paraphernalia to avoid contaminating the evidence. And a lot of the rules were broken. They were handling things without gloves. There was also this confusion because they found Amanda's DNA in, in a knife that they decided to say that this was the knife with which Meredith was killed. And I think it was a knife that belonged to Raphael and they had Meredith's DNA there. Um, the experts here in the United States clearly state that that could not have been the knife. By the way, the knife cuts and how the cut comes, the, the experts can pretty much tell what kind of knife was used. And it wasn't this knife from the drawer. And Meredith had been at Raphael's before and they had dinner and they had sat down for dinner. And then they tried to paint Amanda as this vixen or sex woman and all these things. There was a lesson that needed to be learned from this. Amanda Knox, like I said, she barely knew, learned, spoke the language barely. And she was in an interrogation and they denied her a translator as if she had knew enough to talk. They denied her a translator. They kept her for hours and hours without bathroom breaks. And the lesson learned is that if you are overseas, because I have also read now of many cases overseas where things go wrong for Americans or other people, in fact, other people from other countries when they're overseas, is that the minute, you know, let's say you're in this house where you rent a room and there's a murder, run for the embassy that's where you go. You go to the, if you're American, you go to the United States Embassy and you seek refuge there. It's called, I would call it legal refuge. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you're guilty. It means that you're going there to protect yourself, protect your rights, because the rights that you have in the United States are not, you don't have those there don't carry over unless you're in the embassy. And so what happened at the end is that they were going to, they put Raphael and Amanda in jail and they were going to give them way huger sentences that they did weighty. They offered weighty a deal, who was the one perpetrator, he's do this horrible, horrendous things. And he ended up with 20 years where Amanda and Raphael were going to have life. And so when we look at Chris Quas, it's a similar thing. It's like where the wrong person gets the benefit of the doubt and people feel sorry for the one who's guilty and wrong is made to look right and right is made to look good. And we, then we have to look at what's, going, what's wrong with people's psychology. I think the deal is probably, this is my theory, this weighty guy, broke into an office of this police um, by a, because he was hired by corrupt police or corrupt people in the legal system. They wanted these legal files. And in exchange for him not revealing that relationship, perhaps he got a much lesser sentence. That's the connection that I have with the monster of Florence. Douglas Preston has spoken.
in favor of Amanda Knox because he had dealt with this guy, this very scary guy, be guy before, and he knew what it's like. That they put his friend in jail. Um, that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. So I hope this helps you, and I know there's going to be a lot of arguments. People are pretty imprinted on this story, thinking that these outlandish things happened, that there were all these number of people in a tiny room conducting an orgy. There was nothing that indicated any of that happened. There's tons, there's lots of indication that the other kind crime reconstruction is what took place. Way they broke in through the window. By the way, they also were arguing that it couldn't have been um, that somebody, it looks like somebody staged the window break in because there was clothes on top of the, on top of the glass. Well, that lady that lived in that room, um, she apparently was not, she was a little bit messy, so she may have had clothing already on the floor. Then he broke the window, there was glass on the, on the clothes, and then he trashed the, the, the room so there, there was you know then again closed on top of the glass over again so they were doing very stupid you know that amateur, immature amateur type of logic which I think it was just really geared to framing the American girl alright that's it for me you have a very nice day bye